thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, Lord God, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, we're few in number. We have been throughout the day so far, people on holiday, and I suspect some waiting for kick-off in 15 minutes' time or so. I can see the avid football fans itching to get home. <laughs> and it is fascinating to see the, uh, the excitement of tens of thousands of people, not quite as manic as uh, the Men's World Cup, but I have seen a few cars with the flags fluttering as they drive down the road. But it's only fairly recently that this excitement has come about. In years gone by, most people wouldn't have bothered at all. It's just a few years ago since I was at school. <laughs> just a few. But when I was at school, boys did football, girls did hockey, boys did cricket, girls did netball, boys did metalwork and woodwork, girls did sewing and cookery, boys did technical drawing, girls did typing and shorthand. It's changed <laughs> since then. <laughs> now, you're allowed to do things that you want to do, regardless of your gender. At least in our society, it's not so throughout the world as we see in Afghanistan and Iran and Iraq and other cultures around our world. But here at least and in some other countries of our world. What you can do is not constrained by who you are, what you are gender, race, culture, but all are entitled to fulfil uh, their, their dreams and their wishes, their potential. And that's a little bit of what's lying behind our readings this morning. That first reading from Isaiah, uh, it's uh, Trito Isaiah, written at the time of the return of the exiles, after 70 years of exile in Babylon, the exiles are now returning and they find that their country, which they lost, left all those years ago, has now got other people living there. And the uh, Jews who were left behind at the time of the exile have intermarried. And so you have people like Ezra and Nehemiah who are telling them to put away your wives, send them away, these foreigners, and their children with them. You've got to be pure as Jews, so send them away. And many did, and the women had to go away weeping. But Isaiah isn't saying that. He's saying, maintain justice, do what is right, and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love him, who keep the Sabbath, hold fast my covenant, these I will bring. I will bring them to my holy mountain. I won't send them away. I'll bring them. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. And their offerings will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The fulfilment of the promise given countless generations before to Abraham. That in him all nations of the world will be blessed. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them, besides those already gathered. You won't be excluded because of who you are, what you are, where you're from, and the language you speak. You will be welcomed. Paul is having a tough time trying to debate within himself whether uh, the Jews are still God's people because now Gentiles have been grafted into God's covenant love. Because they've come in, does that now mean the others have been excluded? I ask them, says Paul, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. But what he's done is invite others in. It's not instead of, it's as well as. It 
It's neither, it's not either or, it's with and and. We are grafted in to the covenant of God's love, not in place of, but beside God's covenant people, the Jews. So we come then to that gospel. A Canaanite woman from the region comes out and starts shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. The Canaanites were the Jews' ancient enemy. They had been living in the land before Abraham got there. And so they were seen as enemies. They had to be displaced, got rid of. And Jews would treat them with contempt, just as Jesus does. And so she follows after him, shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord. And then she uses a title she's not allowed to use. Son of David. It's a Jewish title for the Jewish Messiah. And yet she's calling out in her need, Have mercy on me. And Jesus treats her just as she should expect a Jewish man to treat her. First, she's a woman. Men don't speak to women in public, let alone a foreign woman, let alone a Canaanite woman. So he answers her nothing. The disciples come and urge him, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. But it's easy for us to think they're saying to him, just tell her to clear off. But it might well be that they're saying, do what she wants, send her away, happy. And that's the connotation. For she keeps shouting after us. So just do what she wants and get rid of her. But he turns to them. I am not, I am sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. His earthly ministry was only to the Jewish nation. It's not until after the resurrection and at the ascension that the great command is given. Go to all peoples, all nations and make them my disciples. Until then, his ministry is just the Jews. But she's not content. Having been after him shouting, she now runs in front and kneels in front, blocking his way. Lord, help me. Jesus sees not a Canaanite, not a woman, but a heart and a soul in need of help. But still he answers her as she would expect. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Such is her faith. Yes, I'm worthless. Yes, I'm nothing, but I'm still me. I'm still your child. And I can eat of the crumbs. Through Abraham, all the peoples of the world are blessed. Jesus answers her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. It's the greatest acclamation he gives to an individual in the Gospel. He doesn't say that to anyone else. The closest we come to is the centurion's son. Woman, great is your faith. After his ascension, his love will be out to all the nations, regardless of gender, nationality, language, creed, everything else. There are no barriers. All people have the entitlement to become fully God's children in the full knowledge of his love. For the team, in a few moments' time, they'll have to overcome Spain if they are to win the match. For us, the victory is already won. There are no barriers in the mouth of our God. The only barrier is ourselves and our willingness to open our hearts to his love. Will he say to us, great is your faith, let it be done for you as you wish. Amen. Amen.